Volleyball has been the talk of the town in the offseason as the excitement for the sport is at an all-time high. The countdown to this historic event at Memorial Stadium is underway, and Nebraska's premier college volleyball head coaches are here to break it all down in tonight's 2023 fall preview of the State of Volleyball. And good evening and welcome to Nebraska Public Media Sports Special on the State of Volleyball in Nebraska. I'm your host, Larry Putney, and coming up later in the show, we visit with Creighton head coach Kirsten Bernthal Booth. We also send Anna Bellinghausen on the road to Wayne State and Kearney to check out the pulse of two Division II powerhouses. But first, we turn our attention to the event that's been, quite frankly, the buzz of the state and the two head coaches who will be leading their teams in that showdown, four-time national championship coach John Cook, Omaha coach Matt Buttermore. Great to have you both with us. Um, let's maybe start with that. I, if we rewind, Wisconsin had just broken your record. Uh, you had a press conference, and you said what seemed like an offhanded comment, maybe we'll have a match at Memorial Stadium. Was, was it an offhanded comment? Um, that's kind of how it, it, it kind of started was kind of jokingly, but then we really checked in to put in that PBA and I remember the meeting with Trev and Trev said, okay, we're going to get our people and see how many people we can pack in PBA it, and it wasn't enough. So then that's when it says, okay, well, we're going to the stadium and I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the preparation that's gone into this has been remarkable. You were just telling me about testing the TerraFlex outside. Just talk about some of that, you know, what's gone into this. Yeah, well, you know, the other big uh, hurdle to get over was Coach Rule. And and when and again, I, there was a great article about Matt when we started talking about this. I didn't realize it was all the way back in December. But one of the first things I said to Trev is, has anybody talked to Matt Rule? Because, you know, he's going to not be able to use his field for quite a while. And because uh, it's, it's, it's going to take six days to set this thing up. And so Trev says, OK, I'm, I'll, I'm going to talk to him. And Coach Rule said, great. And, and then that's kind of why we put the date where it is, because Minnesota foot, they play Minnesota football the next night. So it's going to be a heck of a week for Husker sports. And uh, so here we are. Yeah, Matt, you, uh, you grew up watching football games at Memorial Stadium, grew up in Lincoln, so you've been there plenty of times watching football. A little pinch test here, thinking you're going to be playing a volleyball match in that stadium. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I try not to think about it too much, actually, because I don't know yeah. if I can wrap my head around what it's actually going to look like. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's uh, grew up in Lincoln. Uh, the stadium was always right there in the middle of everything, and uh, along with uh, the volleyball program. and. Um, so uh, it, was, it was thrilling to get to coach in Devaney a couple years yeah, ago, and yeah. now I guess we're taking that a step up. What's this mean for your program? Uh, it's going to, you know, first of all, it's going to be a special experience for our, our student athletes. Yeah. So um, that's, that's, you know, the look on their faces, you know, what they uh, experience that day is, is really what I'm looking forward to. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it's exciting to be a part of bigger, something bigger than ourselves, you know, yeah. celebrating the sport in our state, uh, potentially setting, you know, a record. Uh, and that's what, that's one of the great things about collegiate athletics and being on a team is being a part of something bigger than yourself. And then th this is next level from that. So I think, I think people know this, maybe they don't, but you're married to a former Nebraska player, Laura Pilikowski. She was player of the year in the conference, AVCA and coach was wondering who she going to be voting for or rooting for. She's, She's going to be sitting with her teammates. But She'll be on the wife. bench wearing black. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, hey, let's talk about um, the new Final Four this year and the, the changes to that. Are you, you must be pleased with the fact that, again, the elevation of this sport continues. Well, uh, I think a lot of what's happening is the success of the Big Ten and what you guys are doing that ratings are going way up, and now we got the big networks paying attention. And now there's, I mean, we've been talking, I know I've been in meetings with the ABCA talking about upgrading, you know, not putting on ESPNU, the national championship match, you know, on a weird time. But the ratings are going through the roof. I know in the Big Ten now uh, we're, sec we're third behind uh, men's basketball and football. And so they're, they're taking notice now and that's why we're seeing you know being on national networks yeah obviously Nebraska public media has had you know college volleyball on for years but Big Ten Network now with a new record 57 matches this upcoming season 
Yeah, and they and they I, I think they would do more. Yeah. I mean, and they want to do more. I mean, I think that's just continuing to grow. But they, I, we were in the media days, and they were talking about the ratings are just mm -hmm. going through the roof. Yep. And uh, you know, and they're going to challenge us a little this year. So just so I can get this out there, but we're playing two Sunday night matches at 6:30 because of Big Ten and ESPN and whatever other networks are televising it. Uh, but Sunday night at 6:30. I mean, that, nobody's ever done that. Yeah. Uh, but I think they've got a window in there that they, they want to put volleyball, mm -hmm. probably after NFL games. And it's not just the elevation of the college sport. You know, you have the Omaha Supernovas coming in, which is going to be a you know a pro team specific to Nebraska. You know, just talk about you know the elevation of volleyball in Omaha and what that does for your program. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of excitement around volleyball right now. Uh, I've always been one that is, we if we just keep making a great product, uh, putting great teams on the floor, playing an exciting brand of volleyball, uh, and, and the game will grow. It's just, I think it's a beautiful game. So. Um, uh, it's just an exciting time, certainly to be in Omaha with the uh, with two pro teams. Hopefully, we can support them. But a lot of people don't remember there used to be multiple pro baseball or football and basketball leagues, and uh, we got to start somewhere. And having having more leagues than no leagues is is a good thing. So. Yeah. Let's dive in uh, to this season upcoming, and I want to start with the coaching changes in the off season. You were able to add another coach, and so I mean Jordan Larson coming back. Talk about the impact of that on this program. Well, the biggest impact is we got another former player that wants to come back, you know. And just for the record, I did hire Laura as our strength coach for several years. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I love having former Huskers back in our program. They know what it takes. Jordan's very passionate about coaching. Uh, she uh, is working really hard at it and she's still trying to help the USA team qualify for the Olympics. You know, people don't realize you have to qualify for the Olympics. So they're getting ready to go to a big tournament in Poland uh, a qualification tournament uh, here in a couple weeks. So she's just been Zooming and interacting with our players via uh, Zoom and uh, what we call volumetrics. So she can watch, she watches practice every day. So she's doing doing a great job with it and, and, uh, and then we'll get her back after the qualification tournament. I think there's been a little coaching going on in your gym. 18 players on the roster, nine newcomers, eight freshmen. Talk about the challenge that presents. It's a good challenge. We have a lot of a lot of new talent. Uh, we're excited about the future, uh, but it is you know meshing culturally and uh, technically and strategically yep. you know what we're doing. So you know that's what the first two weeks have been about. We got a lot of position battles going on. So, which you know we didn't have certainly last year or even two years ago a whole lot of. So, um, so that's been exciting to see the competition in the gym, uh, and it's it's been fun to. Uh, incorporate a whole, almost a whole, you know, what feels like a whole new set of girls here. So, yeah. um, and so we're real excited about the future. We're, we're more physical than we've been ever. And um, uh, once we get everybody up to speed, we're, I think we're going to be uh, fun to watch. You know, there's a, there's a, we're going to talk to Kirsten Bernthal Booth in a moment, but there's a blueprint out there on how to build a program in Nebraska, a college program. You keep, you know, John can't take everybody, right? I mean, he'd love to, but he can't keep all the Division I players right. in the state. And Kirsten did a great job of doing that. Keep, and you have eight Nebraska kids. Talk about that blueprint, and is that what you're trying to do at Omaha? Yeah, we gotta we gotta lock down the region, right? As much as we can. Not everybody wants to stay in Omaha or in Nebraska, but the ones that do, we want to make sure you know they know we want them, and there's a an exciting place to compete at and a, and a great school to come study at. So, uh, so yeah, we, we really want to focus on that. It helps the fan base. Uh, you know, some of our best players right now are from Omaha, and um, you know, any time you, you know, we're not probably gonna go to LA and, and you know make a living off of of recruiting the top players out of LA. So, um, you know, our bread and butter is going to be Nebraska and the surrounding regions. I would imagine you believe this is just great for the state. It's awesome for the state yeah. because, I mean, I, you know, I've seen several reports that per capita we produce more Division I volleyball players than any, any other state. So, uh, and I know a, a lot of them do want to stay close yep. to home and stay in because of everything going on and just, you know, this stadium match. I mean, this this is the epicenter of volleyball in this country. Let's talk about uh, your spring match. You, you called it as competitive a match as you've, you've seen, your red-white match, sorry. Uh, as competitive as, you've, have you, as you have seen. Well, usually in the red-white uh, matches, you know, Matt's, I don't know if they do that, but you're, you, you have to get a practice player in there or a coach has to play or you got to bring back, you know, another older player. Uh, 
this year we actually had you know 14 players so we can make two lineups and uh, so two days before we practiced it we we did some six on six drills and it was very very close so i'm like great let's go let's, let's see go. what you guys got and i, and I, I predicted it was going to be really tight we had four deuce games and the team that lost three one they won one of the games by like six points i think so uh it was very very competitive it was great volleyball and again when you're the red white's always a hard night because the fans don't know who to cheer for but they had a lot of great plays to cheer for and that's what made it so fun yeah your first match is this week so who uh who's your starting setter I don't know yet. <laughs> Today's Tuesday. Everybody wants yeah. to know, you'll right? Find, you'll find out Friday before the match. <laughs> uh, obviously, or returner, Bergen Rally is your freshman. Just talk about the strengths of those two. This has to be as good a set of room as you've had in a while. Yeah, these guys are two really elite setters and uh, great athletes. They do everything really well. Uh, they both played at really high levels, and uh, it's... I know it's you know that's a big question who's going to start you know and and it's a tough decision uh, and but you know it's great to have that competition because that's going to bring out the best in everybody it's going to force those guys to have to perform every day yeah. and that's that's what's how you get better who's your starting setter be? <laughs> well I'll tell you right now uh, we're in the same boat we're still yeah. working through lineups uh, you know we have two freshmen and then a senior so we have you know very different levels of progression and where we're at and, and something so uh, Olivia Curry's done a great job uh, this preseason being a good leader uh, you know she's kind of taken it to another level skill wise too uh, and our, our freshmen are very talented as well they're, they're used to winning you know Ivy Luke's won, I don't know, 27 state championships at Scott. And, you know, uh, you know, I have a player from uh, Mesa and Olivia, Olivia Tukuafu, who was the three-time high school MVP. So, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a competitive gym. Uh, we got three strong personalities, so uh, excited, excited for the year. Competition at the Libro as well. Yep, so uh, we are, that is probably our deepest position is DS, Libero. So, uh, you know, we've moved Rachel Fairbanks to uh, DS and her and Erica Fava from Western Nebraska, our JUCO transfer, are really the kind of the top two right now. But again, that, that will be a competition throughout the year because we have, uh, you know, Briley and Kennedy in particular are doing a great job of competing yeah. as well. So that, you know, that one will be neck and neck for a while. No, no doubt on your side, who you're starting the bar is as much as Lenny Cheboy, Choboy is going to be a fan favorite, right? I mean, <laughs> because her attitude and what she brings. But Lexi's just uh, on another level back there. Lexi is, you know, uh, she went out and trained with USA this summer, and you know, she's she's next in the pipeline for that program. Uh, but uh, she's getting pushed every day, and <laughs> it's great. I love it because. <laughs> I just say, hey, you have a bad day, hey, Laney, you're in. So. I, you know, I don't, I, I, I take a look at Laney, and I think she's one of those players who, if she's on your team, you absolutely love her. If she plays for somebody else, it's like she's the one who's just going to constantly poke you in yeah. competitive, right? Yeah. I, I, I tell our team all the time, if Laney plays and doesn't touch a ball, she's still worth three points, mm -hmm. us winning three points. Wow. Just because of her energy, her, her talk, and... Uh, just her presence on the court. I mean, she's that kind of impact player. Yeah. It, she's she's a blast to, to coach every day. Talk about impact players. We start with you, you already named a captain in her first year, Merritt Beeson. Yeah, Merritt's uh, got a gift of leadership, and um, it, and it does, it, she wants to be a third grade school teacher. So she's the team mom, mm -hmm. takes care of everybody. It, it's just been really cool to see. She's fit right in. I mean. She could be from Columbus or yeah. Grand Island. I mean, you would, she's just, she's, a, she's from Alabama, but she's just a Midwest. Yeah. She just fits in here really, really well. Uh, and, and of course, Lexi is our other captain. Yeah. But yeah, those guys, uh, we, we put them through the ringer to get to that point. It was fun because we got to go to Brazil and they had to, you know, really share why they wanted to be captains and really earn it. And, and it, be, it, was, it was very authentic how it all worked out. Yeah, um, let's just talk about Omaha Impact players. Uh, I would imagine, obviously, Shayla, um, McKenna Rook, uh, you know, two of your stars. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, Kenna was our you know first player to be kind of voted honorable mention All-American, so mm -hmm. she had an amazing year last year. 
Kenna, uh, two Omaha kids. Kenna's an amazing learner. Shayla's a, 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 an amazing competitor, a uh, great all-around player. She does everything for us. Uh, Kaylee uh, was a uh, Jurgens Meyer, uh, another kid from within, you know, 40 minutes of Baxter Arena almost. Um, you know, we moved, she was freshman year in our conference last year, moving her to outside this year, and, and she's embraced that role, really built her herself up physically over the summer, and excited to see her handle a bigger load this, this fall too. So let's talk about your, your your battle you have at Middle John because this is a this is a great battle, especially with the addition of Andy Jackson and what she's shown. Mendelssohn obviously there. Becca Alec is going to be a superstar. Kind of where is that fit? Where is that kind of fitting right now? Same thing as all the other positions. They're battling every day, and uh, and you know that that's the great thing we have is we if somebody's having an off night, you know we got somebody we can put in. Yeah. So I think that'll be a rotating deal who's starting, who's having a good week, and, and who's having a good match. Andy brings athleticism, right? I mean, yeah. identifying that correctly, she just seems like an, an athlete out there. Yeah, the she's, she's uh, uh, very, very athletic, very quick. Um, she's still pretty new to the game. I mean, she played in a small school in Colorado, a small club, and she really hasn't had much high-level experience. Uh, but uh, again, it's one of the great things about coaching is you know, and, and Matt's talking about, he just talked about it. You see these players, how they adapt, they grow, they get better, how hard they work. That's one of the really rewarding things about coaching, and she's, she wants to be great. Mm. Let's talk about some of the other freshmen you have, because this is a special freshman class, you know, ranked number one in the country, and we talked about Cho Boy, and now we talked about Jackson. Maybe run down, you know, Jira Vicious and what she brings and, and the other freshmen you have come in. Yeah, so uh, Harper, yeah. who's, um, you know, is uh, a really true, great six rotation outside hitter and does everything really well. And, uh, you know, but she's got a lot of hype going, you know, she got to go to the SBs and all that. So she's got to learn how to handle expectations and, and perform. Uh, but uh, has that happened in the gym so far? Yeah, yeah. She, 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 and she, she's been humbled many times. But Again, there's, there's, you know, all the hype. You guys will talk to her about that stuff. Uh, and then Caroline Jerevicious is, is uh, a physical, hits the, hits the ball really hard. And uh, she played great in the red-white, uh, which I, I wasn't sure how she was going to play, but she's somebody that, she's, uh, she, she can be a game changer. I think that's all our freshmen, right? I think you covered <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. Uh, outside, uh, that, that battle between, you know, Allie's out there, Lindsey Krause, I mean, you, you must be excited with what you have there. Yeah, those guys are also, you know, that's why we're able to put two great teams together. It's all very close, very even. Yeah. And typically when you make those decisions, it's gonna come down to serving and passing. Huh. So let's talk about, let's kind of jump forward and talk about non-conference schedule. Matt, we'll begin with you. Um, you have some high-level teams coming in. Talk about, you know, your, your pre-conference and what you have going on. Yeah, we're, uh, there's, there's some match we're playing next week that a lot of people talk about, but uh, we're so excited <laughs> about our, our, our home conference yeah. schedule that um, we're trying to make sure people know about that, and our ticket sales are, are already way above last year, so we're excited. But we got Texas A&M and KU coming in right away. Uh, this is Friday, Saturday, so, uh, and we have Pepperdine playing those guys uh, in the early matches too. We're not playing Pepperdine, but uh, so it's gonna be a great, great weekend of volleyball uh, at the arena. So, uh, and then we have uh, following uh, next weekend after after we play at the stadium, then we gotta go to we gotta go to Kansas State and be the first match in there. New facility, uh, so that's pretty exciting. We had an exciting week next week for us, and then we have, we host Long Beach State, Creighton, and Iowa State the week after that. So at home, so um, uh, we're excited. You know, yeah. we want to girls decide to play Division One volleyball. Uh, we want to play the best in the country, uh, and we're, we're excited for that challenge. And we're going to see you uh, playing Creighton on Nebraska Public Media yep, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, good, tough test. Speaking of K-State, Fiona Nepo now coaching yeah. down at K-State, former Husker, which is going to be good to see her back at the stadium um, for that matchup. Let's talk about your, your non-conference. It's, it's, I would imagine it's tough for you because your conference schedule is such a grind. How do you go about the non-conference, and do you just say, let's schedule anybody? Well, the, the biggest problem is, or the biggest challenge is getting teams to play. Mm. And, you know, that's why I asked Matt, how do you get these guys to come to <laughs> Omaha? Because we can't get them to come to Lincoln. Just have them drive 50 miles down the road, yeah. John. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so it's, it's part of our scheduling is who can we get to play, who will want to come here. 
you know, we, we want to have home matches because, you know, we're, it's a, I mean, you know, do you go play somewhere where there's nobody watching or you come here and play in front of 8,000 people and it's a big deal, it's televised. Right. And so that's the biggest challenge to how we put a schedule together. But we're also in a four year deal with Stanford, Kentucky and Louisville. So we know we've got those guaranteed games. Uh, we always try to play Creighton every year, and um, and then Matt's playing Long Beach. They're gonna, I think, you guys playing before they play yep. here. Mm -hmm. So we worked out that deal where the, you know Tyler's coming back, and um, so it's just sometimes it becomes pretty random. Yeah, you know uh, where you go. We're going down to K State too because we we owe them a trip return trip. So I told them when they get the new facility built, great, we'll come down there. So. Uh, but you're right. The the Big Ten is is a grind. So I don't know. You you got to play good teams, and uh, to prepare for the Big Ten, yeah. and then you gotta you gotta get ready to grind through the Big Ten. And the conference schedule doesn't get any easier with conference realignment. You add four, <laughs> you know, remarkable programs into the Big Ten. How do you how do you manage that next year? Have you any, any clue yet? What what are the conversations like? No, we're uh, the big. Uh, I met with our senior women's administrator, Marquita, who's working. The, all those C SWAs are working on scheduling concepts. How we're going to do this? I gave her my feedback on what I thought would be the best for volleyball. So we'll see. The Big Ten's going to come out with something, and yeah. I can tell you right now, n not everybody's going to be happy. So <laughs> it's just it's yeah. scheduling is going to be a nightmare, and how we do it. But there is a cool way to do it, I think. But you know, they got they got a. A lot of other things they got to think about. It was interesting. I chatted with Keegan Cook at the Big Ten Media Days, and Keegan said, "You know, as as much of as big of a reputation as it is in the Pac-10, there's nothing like Big Ten volleyball." And what he saw at Media Days and coaches getting together in the conversation, he said it was just next level. Yeah. Well, the the Big Ten has has gone all in on volleyball, yeah. and their their Media Day that they did is. Incredible, of course. You know Sue Marriott, who used to. <laughs> used to be here. I, I, I'm walking in here like looking for. Her. Where's Sue? <laughs> and uh, you know she's she's behind all that at the Big Ten. She's done an amazing job. And you know they're gonna. I mean the commissioner's coming out for the stadium match. The head of the NCAA is coming to the stadium match. So this is a, this is a big deal in a lot of ways besides just a sold out stadium. Two teams playing volleyball. Or before four we close, and before we close out on that, I, I do want to ask you about the rivalry inside the conference. The new rivalry with Wisconsin, and it's not just on the field; it's become off the court as well, right? Talk about that, and you know, I think it's nine consecutive losses now. And how does that motivate you and your program to get to where they would say, you know, they're the preeminent program of the Big Ten right now? Well, they're, you know, when we first came in, it was Penn State, and we had to catch Penn State and and beat them. And now, now Wisconsin set the bar really high, and everybody's chasing them. So. And then, of course, there's other ways we're chasing them because, you know, they keep expanding uh, the uh, field house where they play. They added more seats trying to catch us and break the attendance record. So we just added 400 more seats. <laughs> right. So, you know, rivalries are yeah. great. Competition is great. And it, it just keeps elevating everything. Yeah. Um, Matt, talk about, you know, this volleyball day in Nebraska. And obviously you and your players will be involved and it's going to be a spectacle. But maybe for the other programs, the other two programs in the state, in Nebraska Kearney and Wayne State, who are also going to be playing on that same day in front of that crowd. And what does this, what's this do for volleyball in the state? I think it honors, you know, we have two, two programs that have competed at a, a really high level for, for decades, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, Rick and Scott do a great job. And, and that's true of so many other college, small college and high schools and clubs around the state. And so, uh, you know, when, when I first heard about the game, I didn't know it was going to be called Volleyball Day. And then when, yeah. when, when I heard that, I think it was at the press conference for the first time or right <laughs> before that. And it's like, that's it. Like, that's perfect. You know, uh, it's going to just it's a celebration uh, of all the hard work, all the dreams uh, that have been fulfilled, you know, and some dreams that have been missed out on maybe, and uh, but just the competition and the, uh, the spirit of volleyball in our state. And so that's, uh, that's what's been neat to me as someone that grew up here and has been really a product of all that. And uh, I think it's gonna be really neat to see that uh, with all the teams on Wednesday. So much has been made and covered. Final thoughts, what, you know, maybe something that people don't know about Volleyball Day in Nebraska that you want to share or, or, or you know, just the spectacle that this will be. It's, it is hard to wrap your head around what this is going to be like. Yeah, it, it really is. I just, the, I think the, the two things, three things I'd like to share is one, 
you know, as Trev deserves a lot of credit for making a volleyball day. That was really his idea, and then giving back to the, you know, all these teams are going to get revenue share from this. So that's that's really giving back and and saying how important that is. Uh, you know, the, the second thing is is that, uh, like Matt said, it's a uh, this is a celebration. Volleyball is a state treasure here, and it's not just Nebraska volleyball. It, it is at all levels. And we wanted to really have high school, NIA, we, but we just couldn't do it. And finally now we've had to cancel school that day. So that's, what's, that's how big a deal this is. Wow. Uh, and then I think the other thing is the team that is putting all this together and building the stage for the court. And you know, there's a lot of work. It's six days of work that's going into this and they deserve a lot of credit. Yeah including your staff, who's done a great job getting yeah. ready. I know it hasn't been easy for Lindsay Wishmeyer and her, and yeah. her group to put all that together. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. I, I can't wait. I'll, obviously, I'll be there and, and be able to watch the two teams compete, but just the spectacle is going to be a blast. John, Matt, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate thanks, Larry. It. We're on the Creighton campus with the head coach of Creighton Volleyball, Kirsten Bernthal Booth, number 18 in the country, coming into the season, again ranked preseason, nine consecutive years you finished tied or at the top of the Big East Conference. This thing's trending in the right direction. You've done a phenomenal job. Well, thanks. You know, you, you kind of get lost in that stuff and you get focused on the next year. And, you know, I've had people mention the preseason. I mean, we don't even discuss preseason. It's, you know, it's all about how you end. But yeah. uh, it's been an awesome ride, and I love this group. And, you know, we want to go further, and hopefully we can do that. Let's talk about the trip first, the trip to Europe. First of all, just general thoughts about how that went. Well, I mean, just on the baseline, we went with 35 people and we came home with 35 <laughs> safely. So I always say I, I never take that for granted. But it really couldn't have gone gone better. It was such a great cultural experience. You know, you train prior, and, and my philosophy with a foreign tour is we're gonna train our butt off prior. We really worked them hard. We had a lot of newbies, so we could put in a lot of systems. And then we go to Europe, and to me, number one is cultural experience. So, you know, we're trying to take in the culture, um, then team bonding, and then volleyball's third. And we played some good volleyball, but volleyball was, you know, the other things were a higher priority at that point. Um, you know, I think only two of our players had ever been to Europe. So, I mean, just seeing that, the food was amazing. The weather was amazing. I mean, Ooh. now people are in Europe the same, and it's, it's like 100 degrees, so right. we, we had like 80 every single day. We didn't have rain except one evening, and we kind of enjoyed the rainstorm. So all those things uh, were great, and we were really grateful for the opportunity. I've heard so many coaches who take teams overseas in the offseason talk about what it does from a bonding perspective mm -hmm. and creating that kind of team unity. Did you see that? Yeah, and you know, we've got, again, we've got such good leaders, and they get that for us to be great, we need to make all of our newbies feel, feel welcome. And so that's always a priority within our program, but it can happen right away because you're, you're in a hotel room with them immediately. You know, you're eating meals, and you know, they're pretty diligent on making sure they sit by different people. So it's kind of organic, but it also is, you know, you just spend intense time with some, some people. You know, some of our freshmen graduated the day before they had to report. So, you know, they're going through a lot of emotions. That's hard. I mean, that was a big ask for these guys. And I think our, our upperclassmen kind of enveloped them. And so there's some relationships that would have taken maybe through November to build that, have, that were built in that short amount of time. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, the returners. Um, obviously, you start with player of the year, the Big East and Nora Sis. And she's one of those players who seems to be big in the big moments. Yeah, Nora, you know, when, and I throw Kendra in that, you know, these two All-American players that are both going to be juniors that set the tone in practice every day, as do so many. But, you know, when your top players are willing to work as hard or harder than everybody else, that sets such a good tenor in practice. Um, and Nora's that kind of kid, you know. Nora, uh, we joke, if you ever watch her, this would be a fun highlight for you guys, she's smiling when she plays all the time. She loves the game. She might love the game more than anyone I've ever coached. The Ted Lasso character that football is life, like that's what the team makes fun. We watched Ted Lasso last spring and they were like, that's Nora. Um, but she's also fiercely competitive and you talk about those big moments. She, it, she doesn't, she's not the mean kid. She's not gonna bark at you, but she wants to win really, really bad. And the way that she's gonna win is by outworking everybody else. And you know, if she's not good at something, she's staying after practice and working on it. 
Um, but just a servant leader, um, yeah, I can't say enough good things about her. Yeah, 30 kills in the NCAA tournament against Auburn, that was her career high. And then to be named the tournament MVP in back-to-back -back years in the Big East, which hasn't happened in 25 years, I think that just speaks to when it's big, when the moment is there, she, she doesn't shy away from that. Yeah, and I mean, you see it with the, her U at stuff with the USA, you know, and she's had the, she's played a significant role on those gold medal teams. And I think the thing, and Nora would hate for me to say this, is because she would never articulate it, but I think she's starting to realize, hey, I'm good at this sport. We've all been saying it, right? But I think there has been a click of like, okay, I want to achieve some really good things, not only during my time at Creighton, but after Creighton, and I can, and I'm going to do everything in my power to work as hard as I can to achieve those goals, if that be professional, if that be national team. So, you know, I think it's been fun to kind of see, again, she'd never say it, but I can see that she says, okay, it's a big moment, I'm ready. <laughs> Always good to have the glue kid on the team too, and that seems to be Kendra. Yeah, I mean, Kendra, again, you know, Kendra gets sometimes, I think, overshadowed because Fight, yeah. Nora gets these Player of the Year mm -hmm. honors and, and Kendra's special, special good um, in so many aspects. I mean, you take away, I mean, the setting obviously is really good, but what she can do speed-wise and strength-wise and defensively, um, blocking, I mean, she's just, she is just an incredible athlete. We know that. Um, and, you know, I, I have big expectations of what I think she could do this year. And Ava Martin was the Big East freshman of the year last year. Seems like when she plays well, it maybe opens things up for Nora because, what are you, 13-1 and one when she has eight kills or more? Oh, I didn't know that. I knew yeah. that's a Rob Anderson stat. It I is need a Rob to make Anderson sure. Stat. I need to make sure. I, <laughs> Ava, we're at seven. Let's go. No. Um, Ava's just developed so much, and you know she's really worked on her backcourt game. She's going to be fighting for uh, six rotation time this this fall. Um, her passing has really improved. Her defense has improved. You know she's a kid that it, it, she just developed so quickly last year. You know she didn't start at the beginning of the year, and then we put her into the right side, and then finally we moved her to the outside. But she was getting housed early. Like she would hit low, and the blocks were coming. And she's got a big arm, so that that block would come back pretty quickly. Um, but she is really developed the ability to go after hands and it's kind of fun to watch her just you know kind of spray you know balls all over the place off of uh, blockers fingers and she does it in our gym a lot hopefully it'll translate to other gyms let's uh, let's talk about some of the newcomers and maybe start with the transfer in Bickle Meyer and what what does she bring and what is the rest of the you know the new faces in the gym what do they bring yeah Ellie uh, had an incredible career at, at Rice loved her career at Rice I love I love those grad transfers that are coming from situations that they love because they're generally good culture kids and she definitely is that her parents are both Creighton grads actually her dad was a star baseball player here so she has those Creighton ties um, and she is a kid that has every shot in the book and I think the reason we picked her up is because she ate us alive when we played rice last year and we kept on being frustrated because she kind of doesn't like she's she's going to be good in warm-ups but she's not going to there, there's going to be other kids in our gym that are going to wow you more in warm-ups um but you know if, if you take lines she can slice and dice and she can kind of go every direction let's talk about the pre-conference um again a tough pre-conference schedule that you've set up um one of those is another ranked team you're going to face purdue on the road to start just maybe talk about pre-conference and that one specifically yeah, that first weekend's gonna be tough. Right before we, Purdue, we play a Loyola Chicago team that is so good, NCAA tournament team. And then the next day, right into Purdue, who, um, you know, has one of the best class, freshman classes in the country coming in, and obviously a great program with, uh, you know, the fun thing is Grace Heaney's on that team, who was a teammate of my daughter's for years. So, you know, I know Grace well, and, um, you know, I think she might be fighting for time. So all those things will be great, but we will, Definitely get our chance to be punched a couple times and see if we can punch back early. Was, I thought it was a little unusual. You were picked second this year in the Big East. That's got to provide a little. I, I mean, hope so. Nine straight years you've been at the top of the league and you're picked number two to start. Is that a little motivation for I the players? I hope so. Yeah. You know, I think it's a, you know, it could have gone either way between us and Marquette, I think. And Marquette does return basically everybody and it made a sweet 16 run. But yeah, I mean, we will definitely be talking about that in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot has been made about, um, you know, this volleyball day in Nebraska coming up. Um, and, and we're getting ready to head to right after this conversation. We're going to talk with Wayne State and UNK who are playing. Talk about what that means to those two programs to have that kind of stage and what it means for volleyball in Nebraska. It's already big, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's already important at the high school level. But what does that mean for first for those kids, but then also volleyball in this state? 
Well, I think sometimes people get caught up in the Division One programs here, or they play high school, or they play club, but they don't realize how great of levels we have at the D2 and the NAI. And I think people will be shocked. I mean, I'll, I'll talk to good volleyball, high school volleyball players that maybe aren't Division One level, and they'll just assume maybe Division II is not high level volleyball. And you're like, oh no, Division II, the high level of Division Two is better than a lot of the mid-level Division One. So I think people will love getting to see how high of a level Wayne State and Kearney. I mean, these are two perennial powers, um, very well coached, established programs. Um, so I think people will be impressed by the level of play. Yeah, speaking of preps in Nebraska, uh, Destiny Dadam Simpson, we've seen her play a couple of times, right, in the state championship game and in an all-star game. She seems special. How has it translated to the next level early on here? Destiny can be the best kid in our gym. I mean, she, she has a cannon for an arm. She right now has to work on, she's a little bit erratic and she knows it. And so that's what she's working on. But her upside is, is pretty spectacular. Um, so that's, that's kind of what she's working through and we're working on. She's working one-on-one -on -one with Angie on some things, um, but really wants to get better. I think also as a package player, um, similar to Ava and Nora, that she could play six rotations, can head out of the back row. Um, but I think she has the pieces to be pretty special. And maybe just in the last 30 seconds, I know she's not the only newcomer who has high end potential. Talk about T-Strike a little bit. Yeah, Ava will fight with uh, Bicklemeyer and a couple other people for that right side spot. Uh, just really long. I mean, you know, her block, I was actually working with her yesterday because right now a lot of times she just blocks the area. And we really want her to go block, you know, use your length. If you get burnt on a, on a read, it was actually against Destiny. Destiny got inside of her. I said, you know, you, you're long. Like, go get that ball and kind of, I think it'll be fun. She's, she wants to take all the information in and, you know, just, you know, working with her. I think she's got a huge upside. Um, also a great young woman that I think could be a, a really big player for us down the road. It's always great to be here. Thanks so much for uh, inviting us in, and we appreciate you taking the time to chat. My pleasure to be here. Thanks. Best of luck. We're here at Wayne State College alongside me, Coach Scott Kneifel. Coach, thanks so much for spending the time. Thanks for having me. Well, let's talk about the biggest off-season headline, of course, Nebraska Kearney versus Wayne State inside of Memorial Stadium. What was your first reaction when you found out? Um, you know, Coach Cook gave me a phone call. I was at the ABCA Coaches Convention in Omaha at the Final Four, and he gave me a phone call and, and said that this was going to go down. And at first, I was like, what? We're, we're doing what? And uh, you know, he's just uh, said that it was going to happen and asked if we wanted to be a part of it. And obviously, we're super excited about the opportunity. 91,000 fans packed inside of Memorial Stadium. Have you envisioned what that day is going to look like? <laughs> not really, not yet. Um, it's crazy. I've, I've obviously been inside the stadium a few times, and it's a great venue um, for volleyball. It's going to be incredible to have that many fans watch a volleyball match. I'm, I'm from a town of 270 people in Newcastle, Nebraska. so. To play in front of 91,000 people and get to coach in front of 91,000 people uh, is an opportunity that it's a once in a lifetime. How about that moment telling your players, your team, that they'd be playing inside a Memorial Stadium? What was that like? I think they were shocked a little bit, you know, talking about we're, we're playing where, we're playing outside, and, um, you know, how are we going to do this and things, but, you know, just excitement, you know, the, the chance to showcase, you know, our university, our volleyball program in front of not only that many people, but, you know, people watching at home as well mm -hmm. across the state of Nebraska is just a, something that can't be replaced. So 13 of these 17 players on your roster are from the state of Nebraska. The other one's not too far away either. Right. What does it mean to recruit in state and keep that talent here? Yeah, we're really fortunate to be able to do that. You know, we have great high school coaches across the state of Nebraska, great high school programs, um, and a lot of great players. And we've recruited, you know, Nebraska for a long, long time, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And it's just great that we don't have to travel very far for recruiting for a lot of different reasons. But you know, it helps attendance when we're here at Wayne State, when our home games, you know, to have that local flavor and it, it means a lot to the people around this area. You've been coaching for 20 years. How have you seen that recruiting pool just keep going up and up in talent in the state? Yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, volleyball keeps getting better. The talent keeps getting better. You know, the players keep touching higher and becoming quicker and stronger. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to coach and the talent in our state that we're able to draw from makes it that much better and it's great. 
Let's talk about some offensive weapons for you and your team. You're returning Taya Beller. Let's talk about her and just what she brings to the squad. Yeah, Taya is a phenomenal athlete. You know, she's a 6'2 middle blocker from Lindsay, Nebraska. That, you know, she's a dynamic player. She blocks the net extremely well across the net, but she's a one foot attacker, which is kind of a, a rare thing for, for, for volleyball, to be honest with you. You know, she touches 10 foot five off of one foot. And she touches 10 foot two off of two feet, but we want her playing at 10 five. So every one of her attacks across the net, she jumps off of one foot, um, which is extremely explosive, extremely dynamic, and she puts the ball away. Uh, every award she gets, she deserves, um, and she's a great leader. So same position, very different player. And Maggie Bramer, what does she bring to the table? Yeah, Maggie's as consistent as it gets. You're talking about a player from Pierce, Nebraska that never played any club volleyball, a four sport athlete that, you know, just went from sport to sport to sport. And then we were fortunate enough to recruit her here to Wayne State College. And she was one of the top two attackers in the nation percentage wise, as far as that goes in division two volleyball. So she's super consistent. You know, she brings a lot of fire to our team and energy. And, and, and we're just really fortunate to have her. Another veteran on the team, Kelsey Chada. What has she meant to this program and her leadership? Yeah, Kelsey's a lot of the glue to our team. You know, she just does everything well for us. A six rotation outside that serve receives at a really high rate. And obviously her net skills are really good as well, but she's just a great all around player. And that six rotation player that you really truly need, you know, that's in there the entire time. She's a quiet leader. She leads by example, but she's also a calming force for us. So. Um, having her out there is definitely a plus for us. And then the first team all-conference setter, Rachel Walker. How have you seen her grow and what do you want to see out of her this season? Yeah, you know, she's a phenomenal player. You know, she's been here, she's a sixth year player. You know, with, we're, we're ending up having, you know, the COVID and the red shirt. And, you know, so she had that red shirt year, the COVID year, and this is her last, last and final go here at Wayne State College, but she just dishes it. You know, she's phenomenal. She sees the matchup across the net that we need. And, uh, she just goes for it. She's relentless and she can really sling it around and she's a lot of fun to watch. So coach, there's eight newcomers to this team. We've got six freshmen and then two transfers. Out of these new faces, what are you expecting? Yeah, I mean, a lot of energy. Right now, we've been in five practices so far and, and just a ton of energy, a ton of athleticism, a lot of learning going on in our gym the last couple of days, but a lot of really good things from them. And, you know, they're, they're battling for playing time. You know, everybody wants to play. We understand that as coaches. You know, when you have 17 players and only six, six can be on the floor at one time, you know, th there are people that are battling. Um, but role acceptance, you know, accepting your role and, and having a lot of fun with our team, that will go a long way this year. Has anyone stood out particularly in these early pra practices? Yeah, I think Chachi uh, Robles from, from Norfolk Catholic. He's a really dynamic outside hitter that can hit a variety of shots. Uh, Ella Myler from Missouri Valley. Uh, Lainey Cottle from Hardington Cedar Catholic. You're talking about a lot of local players that, you know, once again, played multiple sports. So, you know, to get them in the gym and, and have the opportunity to just play volleyball for four years, it's gonna really help them. And you're seeing them learn as we go each practice. Yeah, building off of last season, 30 and three, a regular season conference title. What's been your message to the team in keeping up all that success? Yeah, I mean, we just want to keep getting better every day. You know, I mean, the wins and losses will take care of themselves. Hopefully more wins than losses, obviously. But going 30 and three, it was a great season for us. But, you know, we want more. And when I mean we want more, I mean, we might not go 30 and three this year, and that's okay but we want to win a national championship. That's our ultimate goal. And for us to do that, we've been ranked number one in the country for several weeks last year and several years prior. But you know, we've been to the final four, but that, that national championship has eluded us a little bit. So we want to go after that thing. So we want to be playing our best volleyball at the end of the year. I feel like this group has a lot of veteran leaders. What will it take to be on that pedestal come the end of the year. Yeah, I think team unity is going to be key. You know, that role acceptance that we talked about and just being a team and having a lot of fun. You know, our, our players have, they play so much better when they, they're enjoying themselves out there. And, you know, we're going to be coaching them. We're going to coach them hard and we're going to teach them those things, but we want to release them to the game too. We want to turn them loose. And, um, you know, we feel like we have a bunch of horses out there with a lot of experience and we just want to let them loose and have a lot of fun. Well, August 30th will definitely be a lot of fun. Coach, what are you most excited about? for Volleyball Day in Nebraska? You know, I mean, we get to play another great opponent, Nebraska Kearney, I think that that's exciting. Um, but I think just seeing our players' reaction, you know, to, to getting that opportunity, that once in a lifetime opportunity that they'll never get again and, and embracing it. Um, 
you know, they, they know how to play volleyball, obviously, but play, I'm sure there will be some nerves. They'll be nervous. I'm sure I'll be a little bit nervous, but it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun for everybody. Coach, thanks so much for the time. We really appreciate it. Can't wait to see August 30th. Me too. Thank you. We're here at Nebraska Kearney. Alongside with me is head coach Rick Squires. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, and I feel like the first thing we have to get into right away is Volleyball Day in Nebraska. It's where your team will do an exhibition against Wayne State. How special is this moment for you and your program? Yeah, I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, you know, not something that I had ever really even thought about, but uh, when the opportunity came along, uh, I, really just one of those things you couldn't say no to. I don't think any of us is quite sure what to expect, but uh, we're excited and appreciate being included for sure. When was this idea brought to your attention? What was that initial reaction? Yeah, I mean, the first I heard was uh, from Coach Kneifel at Wayne State. And uh, I know he's got a, you know, a longstanding relationship with Coach Cook, and I think they had been talking about it and maybe having kind of an undercard prior to a match that uh, they were thinking about playing. And I'm, I'm not 100% sure that Coach Cook is 100% uh, sure about the whole thing either. But when it all began and the discussion started, uh, Coach Kneifel talked to me about our interest. And basically from the start, uh, I made it clear that we were interested, uh, even with all the unknowns. And then things just kind of progressed little by little. And all of a sudden, uh, we're at a press conference and this thing's going down. So uh, we're in. What was the team's reaction when you got to tell them? I think similar. I mean, I got a few stares like, uh, what are you talking about? And uh, I think as things began to unfold and the buzz moved through the state, uh, there's been an excitement. And uh, again, just, you know, feel great about being included. We hope like crazy that the weather is good and it is real volleyball because uh, I think it is uh, one of those things that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Have you envisioned what that day will be like? A little bit, but I, I think it's hard. First of all, I'm not in the stadium very often. Um, you know, imagining a volleyball court in the stadium and what that's going to look like, what, what it's going to look like from the stands, what it's going to look like from the court, how it's going to play out. Uh, you, you have a vision of it, but I think maybe that's the first part of it is just satisfying the, the whole curiosity of what's this going to look like. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to find out pretty soon. Well, one thing we do know about is your returning lineup for Carney. Uh, let's start first with the sophomore setter, Peyton Neff. What have you seen from her and her growth? Yeah, just continues to get better and better and more comfortable. And last year was the first time through an entire schedule as a redshirt freshman and handled that really well. Ended up being an all-conference player for us. But I think this year is just more comfortable than ever and continues to get more confident every single day. Still has plenty of things like we all do to, to keep working on, but she has the right mentality for it. She wants to be great. Uh, her teammates love playing with her. And so it's a part of our situation right now that uh, is much more of a known than it was last year when we entered the season, having a setter who's going to go through the process for the first time. And one of your veteran leaders, Lauren Tobenheim, how have you seen her impact this team on and off the court? Yeah, I mean, I would consider Lauren to be maybe our best all-around volleyball player. She can do a little bit of everything. She is a six-rotation player, whether you're asking her to attack from the left or the right pin. Uh, arguably our best serve-receive passer, even though she's 6'2", and a lot of people pick on her and they think, you know, we're going to serve at the big kid over there. Um, great volleyball IQ, uh, court presence, I, I think is one of the players on the court that everybody feels better having out there. And so uh, we're still in the process this year of trying to put that rotation together, but we know Lauren's going to be a big part of it. Yeah, another big offensive weapon, Emerson Siza. How has she seen just her growth throughout this program and especially impacting that offense? Yeah, I mean, uh, coming to us from Division One, I, I think what we saw right away from Emerson was she could score points on the pin. And sometimes in Division Two, that's hard to find. I mean, all the D1s, 
grab anybody that could be a pin hitter at that level. And, and she was capable and actually having a fair amount of success at Wyoming as a pin hitter. So her coming in here right away made an impact, somebody that we wanted to set on the outside. She can go get you 15, 20, 25 kills on a given night. And you know, when you're a setter, that's nice to have. And so she also relishes that role. She, she wants the ball and she's not afraid to take a swing under duress. And so we feel good about her position. And then a graduate transfer, Jaden Ferguson out of Northwest Missouri State. How can she impact the team this year? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's two things. First of all, we don't have to play against her anymore, which is uh, nice. Uh, we've had to deal with her on the other side of the net plenty of times. But um, what we see so far from Jaden is another player who's, she's kind of got those baller skills where she can do a little bit of everything for you. She can score points uh, in a lot of different ways. She can run inside. But she's, she's just an all-around volleyball player. Uh, she doesn't have a glaring weakness in her game. Uh, she's got, uh, we're, we're seeing already, you know, leadership attributes and she's a tremendous teammate and we're just really fortunate that uh, she chose to play her last year here at UNK. Carney has some shoes to fill in those middle blocker positions. Who have you seen step up for those roles? Yeah, I mean, last spring we had uh, Trista Marks and Abby Rose, who are going to be sophomores this year, get a whole bunch of reps and improve and become more comfortable playing at the college speed. They both, I think, are capable of having really good seasons for us. In both of their cases, however, they don't have a lot of experience. So we're, we're trying to get them some experience in the early going with some of the scrimmages. And sometimes, you know, you're just going to have to live with the fact that they're going to have to play through some of that. And we're going to have to lean on some of our veterans, like the ones we've already talked about. Uh, we do have a couple of freshmen in, uh, in Mia Berg and Sydney Davis. Uh, as true freshmen who are athletic enough to maybe come in and make a contribution, but it's still really early and they're trying to kind of get their bearings. But we like the athletes we have in that position. We just have to kind of get them some experience. Yeah, well, it all starts August 30th at the exhibition against Wayne State. Coach, what are you most excited about for that day? Uh, just to get the season started and, you know, the spectacle of that whole thing. I think we're all really excited about that. And we know we have an unbelievable opponent on the other side of the net. So it's a lot of things to take in. Uh, I hope the weather cooperates and it comes down to being, you know, a game about volleyball and not a game about the wind and the sun or the heat or something like that. But uh, if it is a game of volleyball, we're, we're gonna have our work cut out for us. And I know both programs have a lot of pride. We're gonna be really competitive. It'll be a tremendous test for us going into the first weekend of the season. So we just want something positive to pull from the match. And either way, we know we're going to have a memory to last a lifetime. Coach, thanks so much for the time. Can't wait to see you at Volleyball Day in Nebraska. Appreciate you having me. And it's our pleasure to welcome in for the second year in a row. Uh, volleyball beat writer Lincoln Arnold joins us. You just heard them talk about the opportunity to play. And I mean, what a, you've heard so many people say, I can't imagine what it's going to be like. I feel the same way. Yeah, I mean, volleyball players have lots of dreams to play in college, play in the Olympics. None of them probably thought, I'm going to play in a sold-out football <laughs> right, stadium, right. too. So it's, it's a bucket yeah. list they didn't know was on their bucket list. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about, let's jump into conference realignment for 2024 because we're, we're adding four top high-level programs into the Big Ten Conference. Your thoughts on that, and how are they going to manage this? Yeah, I mean, you got three teams that have won national championships. I mean, I think of the, there's been 42 national championships played, and in 2024, 21 of those championships will be part of the Big Ten. Wow. So it, it adds a lot of competition. Um, I mean, Oregon knocked out Nebraska last year from the from the tournament. So, and then also the other side of it is it adds a little bit more travel, a little bit more wear and tear, and just kind of it makes that that ten week sprint an even longer, more challenging road. Nebraska's always been a recruiting juggernaut. I, I would imagine that just got even more powerful when you add the best player to ever play women's volleyball and Jordan Larson to your staff. Yes, I mean. <laughs> It, we talked to some of the commits, the 2025 commits this summer, too. Like, oh, I'm on a Zoom call with Jordan Larson. I mean, their eyes got a little bit big. Uh, it's just kind of they had to pinch themselves, too. So, I mean, the staff already with, with what Jalen Reyes does and what John Cook brings to the table, too, and Kelly Hunter, uh, to add an Olympic gold medalist to that, too, uh, it, 
it's a it's a juggernaut yeah. that keeps on rolling and producing results. Yeah, you you were sitting here. You heard John uh, deflect the question of who his starting setter is going to be. Um, your thoughts? Two talented talented players, the freshman and the and the returner. I mean, you, you can't go wrong. I think uh, Kennedy Orr really has improved from last year too. I think she had a little bit of in inconsistency problems, but mm -hmm. uh, she spent a lot of the spring working with with Hunter and Cook took a step forward, but I think Bergen Riley is just so consistent. I mean, she's so smooth and can run an offense. doesn't look like she's trying that hard, but she's, she does it at a high level too and makes it look easy, which is, gives her that much more credit and that much more impressiveness of it. And at 6'2", right. she adds that element of the block too, right? Yes, I mean, yeah. I, I think that she, yeah. she has, that's where she has areas of growth too, but I think her mindset and the way she can distribute the ball and kind of think one step ahead of what the defense may expect mm. and she can counter that too. Uh, she just has really good connections with her hitters and can do things with the ball that very few setters in the country can do. How many times have you seen a transfer come into a program and be a captain? Oh, I not, not very often, if, if it's ever happened, too. I mean, Merritt was, Merritt Beeson was a captain at Florida last year, too, but to come in, and when we talked to her in March, I think, right after beach season ended, I mean, she just has a presence about around her. People like being around her. She just is very well-spoken. She's very articulate. She relates to people in a, in a yeah. great manner, and, and really brings gravitas to the, to, the, to the team and really kind of makes everyone, like, I think, John Cook said she's the mom of the team, and she has, she's bringing all the, all the fruit yeah, snacks. Right. She's bringing whatever they need yeah. in, in her giant bag. So she's a really great asset to the team. I'm sure you get this question all the time. This is a young team, mm -hmm. um, but how good are they going to be, right? I mean, this seems like they've improved in talent. It seems like a better, co more cohesive team, but everybody in the Big Ten's gotten better. Yes, I mean, that's the part. It's, it's experience versus talent. Nebraska brings in a lot of talent, and some of it may be helped by their ignorance of not knowing what they're going up against, what they're in store for for this year. So they got a lot of talent, and I think that if, if they gel and mesh as a team like we've seen so far, they can really do good things this season. In 20 seconds, Nebraska-Wisconsin. It's going to be Wisconsin reloaded. They had a couple of big yeah. transfers. Um, I think if Nebraska really wants to achieve what is possible this year, they need to figure out the Wisconsin problem. Yeah. It's I always, think they do. I think they do. It's always great to have your perspective. Appreciate you being on for the second year in a row and, and bringing the insight. You bet. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's Lincoln Arneal. Well, the showcase and the spectacle of volleyball in this state just keeps getting better every year. A special thanks to John Cook, to Matt Buttermore, Kirsten Bernthal Booth, Scott Kneifel, Rick Squires, and Lincoln Arneal, of course, for joining us on this very special state of volleyball. I'm Larry Putney. We'll see you again in an arena or a stadium real soon for your home for volleyball right here on Nebraska Public Media. Thank <laughs> you.